Welcome all sports fans, YouTubers, Facebookers, all social media across the nation. Uneducated never presents uneducated sports talk. I'm your host, Carlos Clayton, and today we're going to continue our 32 for 32. We have two teams on today's episode. First, we'll talk about the Kansas City Chiefs, and then we'll talk about the Dallas Cowboys, America's team, whatever. Uh, but we're getting into that. Uh, before we start, please like, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to Uneducated Never, please subscribe to Uneducated Network. Subscribe to Uneducated Sports Talk, where you see my show, Uneducated Sports Talk. You'll see So You Think You Know Sports, hosted by Craig Jones. You'll see In the Paint with Red. Uh, you'll, you'll see uh, Game and Uneducated, uh, Uneducated Star Wars Talk, Uneducated Heroes Talk, Uneducated Oldies. It's, it's all, all kind of things going on, man. So please check that out. Um, we have all kind of great things coming to the show, and we're doing this for you guys. So please subscribe while you can. Be the first to subscribe and check us out, man. So that being said, this is an educated sports talk, and we're talking 32 teams in 32 days. Today, we missed a couple of days because of, uh, you know, a lot of stuff happening to the southwest Louisiana area. Uh, so we had to go ahead and kind of calm things down. But now we're getting back to normal speed just a little bit. I promise you guys next week uh, we have a lot more shows coming out in the paint and rail. We'll be uh, on tomorrow. So stay tuned tomorrow night, which will be Monday night, well, uh, which I believe is the, what is that, Monday the 5th? No, Monday the 4th. Yeah. So just check that out. Uh, in the paint and rail will be on tomorrow night. Uh, uh, with, uh, with co-starring myself, Carlos Clay, and Devontae Ron, aka Red. So, doing our 32 for 32, 32 NFL teams, 32 days. Today we're on the Kansas City Chiefs, and we're on the Dallas Cowboys. Tomorrow we will talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Green Bay Packers as well. But let's go ahead with the Kansas City Chiefs right now, coming off of 12 and 4, very good uh, season. They got benefited from a Derek Carr injury, which hadn't which uh, made them have a home field advantage, but they did lose to uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, in, in, their, uh, in the divisional round. So this team is always a sleeper team for me every single year. They are always a team that could break out just because they're a good defense, just because they don't really make mistakes. They're, they're sort of vanilla on offense, but it's, a, it's like a good vanilla. You know, one of those fluffy, creamy vanillas. You know, it's one of those tasty vanillas. <laughs> I must be hungry, but Sam. Kansas City is always that team. I always say, man, they're just like one play or one player away because they're, they're good. They're not great at offense, but they're, they're very good at all the aspects. You have the, you have the quarterback, Alex Smith. You have the uh, tight end. You have uh, Tyler Kill as your uh, a threat uh, uh, as a receiver. You always had good running play. You always had a good offensive line, and but nothing great about their uh, offense, nothing great. But their defense has always been very, very good, and that's kept them uh, uphill over the last couple of years now. But they're tied at 12 and 4 with the Oakland Raiders, but they did wind up winning the uh, division to have the home field advantage. Uh, like I said, lost to Pittsburgh, and now here we go. So Andy Reid, he, he's just been a master no, no, uh, no matter where he's been, at. and I'm, I'm sad that he still hasn't won the Super Bowl yet. But Andy Reid is a beast, man. He comes that he, he he comes to play every time. He comes to coach. He loves coaching. You can tell that. He has Alex Smith as a Alex Smith is the best game manager quarterback in the history of the NFL. When you say you want a game manager quarterback, because, uh, you know, if you look at the dictionary, you'll see Alex Smith on there. He is the best. He will not make a mistake, but he also kind of won't win you a game. But he still does it in flashes and flares. He's still very good. You can still depend on him so for, for the most part. Um, when I say that, when you have to give him the ball and he has to produce, he will make plays. So he's a little bit above a game manager, but he, if you say game manager, Alex Smith is the guy, no matter what. So, uh, you got that going on. Tyreek Hill, who was a dominant his rookie year, he just showed flashes of something special. I mean, he, he can score the kick return game, the power return game, the running game, the receiving game. He does it all, man. So Tyreek Hill is just a little human joystick who uh, a lot of fantasy owners are looking up, and they really want him bad. So, uh, here we go with that, and Travis Kelsey, who's been uh, one of the best tight ends the last couple years now. He had a very bad moment in the Pittsburgh game, uh, but, you know, dropping passes. But outside of that, he's had a tremendous career so far, and everyone likes him for his personality. Uh, he's a pretty cool guy, I heard, outside of the uh, NFL as well. And But their backbone is their defense. The defense always keeps them in there. Eric Berry, who's the prior one of the best feel-good stories in sports, uh, just having cancer and then beating cancer, coming back and being a star once again. Eric Berry is the man out there. Marcus Peters is a very underrated cornerback. He's, he takes a lot of chances, and I like cornerbacks who take chances because you know what? 
It's only a dime a dozen times you have a chance to get an interception, interception in the NFL. So when you get that chance to get an interception, you take advantage of it. And sometimes it gets beats because he, he comes in and takes a lot of chances. But I like that, though. Uh, so Marcus Peters, you have Justin Houston, the sack machine, and then you have Derrick Johnson, the one of the great linebacks that they have. So their defense has always been in place. Their defense is going to be fine no matter what. It's, it's the offense has to go ahead and up their game, up their ante to be something special. And uh, we shall find out, man. What they did it, for their offense, they looked for the future. And I really can't blame them. They went from pick 27 to pick 10. They gave up their first round pick and the 91st overall pick in a 2018 uh, pick as well. I believe to the Cardinals, I think, to uh, get Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback from Texas Tech, in the first round. And look, I like the guy. I like the guy if he's going to sit there for a few years and, and sit behind Alex Smith. If you wanted a guy right then and there who could prove himself, I think it would have been Deshaun Watson. But they chose to go with the Patrick Mahomes route. And I think if he sits down two years, the guy's a gunslinger, and he is ready to play. I saw him in the preseason. He looked pretty good. He had some flashes pretty good and some flashes of being a rookie. That's what it is, what you're going to get. But his, his good flashes outweighed his bad flashes. So I think Pat Mahomes is going to be something special in the NFL. He's a gunslinger. He has, he has to build, and he can run when he wants to, you know, but he would rather throw that ball. So I like what they got going on for their future. But Alex Smith is still the man. Uh, I don't think there's no threat to pass up Alex Smith this year. Maybe next year, or things just go crazy away for them, then I can see Patrick Mahomes coming in. But for for the duration of the year, I don't see. I don't think Patrick Mahomes steps a foot on the field at all this season. Uh, they they want to keep him knowledgeable, keep him learning, and then may, maybe next year or the year after that, for sure, he will be the guy and ready to go in Kansas City. Uh, they also went their second pick. They went a uh, Tana Kastner. Uh, deep as an end from Villanova. He's a big old dude, man. He's 6'7", 289 pounds. He's basically going to play your DN in a 3-4 scheme. Um, you know, you don't, you don't get guys like that from a Division one, one Division one lower uh, programs in Villanova. So that's a big dude, 6'7", 289 pounds. You can't miss him, man. He's a physical freak of nature. He's going to do nothing but wonders for that Kansas City defense that's already good as it is. So, um, And then three, Kareem Hunt. They wanted some offense productivity. For the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, they got it in Kareem Hunt, the running back from Toledo. He is basically an every down kind of back, fast, shifty, can block, strong. Um, you know, I, I like him, and I think that he will turn some heads in fantasy if you get him in the lower tier, something like that. But I, I think Kareem Hunt is going to be a beast. I like what he's doing, uh, and I think I like what Kansas City did in this draft. You know, you don't want to do anything overly crazy. So uh, they kind of sort of did when they went to get Pat, but that was for a good reason, though. It was for the future. You want to think for the future. Keep your team rolling. You know, keep this team going good. And I like what Kansas City did. I had them. They were 12-4 and four last year. I think this year they sort of slipped just a little bit, but they still made the playoffs. I, 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 I had the Raiders being this dominant juggernaut in the AFC West. And I had the Kansas City Chiefs going at 10-6, and six, but still making the playoffs in the wild card. And you never know what happens with that. Uh, the goal is just to get to the playoffs, to be honest. Whether it's winning your division or not, get to the playoffs because anything can happen. Everybody knows that. So Kansas City goes 10 to 6 this year. Mark my words, uh, and we shall see about that. They have a tough game. First game against the New England Patriots in New England. Uh, the Super Bowl champions are coming uh, in at home and playing against Kansas City Chiefs. So they already have a tough schedule out the uh, blocks against those guys. So um, let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys. How about those Cowboys, right? America's team, quote unquote, people say. Uh, Jason Garrett is leading this team. They went 13-3 uh, last year. And look, Dak Prescott came in, took over for Tony Romo, and they never missed a beat. That offensive line is great. Ezekiel Elliott is a great running back. And he, and you put a great running back with an awesome offensive line, you're going to get what they happen. You know, 1,600, over 1,600 yards rushing. Um, most times he wasn't even touched till about three yards. Three or four yards, not even touch. It's crazy. The, the, this O line is amazing, and the defense sucks so much, but you would never know because the defense is barely on the field. And that's how you play. If you know that you have a bad defense, you focus on a running game and get you a build you an offensive line that will carry your team all the time. So that was great for the Cowboys did for themselves. They finally did some smart things. Jerry Jones finally became smart and focused more on the interior needs of what the Cowboys really need to be about instead of focusing on like almost drafting Johnny Manziel, that kind of stuff. So Jerry Jones, at the age of 227, has finally come to his senses. 
But uh, Dak Prescott's there. Ezekiel Elliott, we know about his fallout right now. He's having a, you know, he, he can play, but at any moment he can be suspended for six games. Uh, so they're very streaky. So for fantasy owners who did pick him up pretty early, good luck because you don't want him to be out in the middle of the season, the heart of fantasy, you know. You don't want that to happen. And then uh, Dez Bryant is always going to be there for you guys. No matter you say what you want, you like, you love him, you hate him. Uh, the man comes out there and he plays on the field. He plays his heart out when it's on the field. We're not talking about practice. Practice. Training camp. That's about training camp. It's about a real game here. And in the real game, Dez Bryant does show up and he works hard and he gets catches and gets touchdowns. Dak Prescott has looked very well in the preseason. He has not missed a beat. I was kind of scared of his sophomore slump. That more teams are focused on, but just just seeing how he looked in preseason, I, I think this guy's gonna trip on his uh, his years. I think he's gonna go ahead and you know take more responsibility for the Cowboys and take more more responsibility as the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. And if he does well, this team will just keep riding that hot seat. But I do think that there's a better team, and NFC East is a beast of a division. Like I said, the AFC West, NFC East, and the NFC South are the three toughest divisions in my opinion. But when you have uh, the NFC East, where there's always all these teams will forever be rivals. It doesn't matter who plays against who, whether Dallas plays the Eagles, the Redskins, or the Giants, that'll be rivalry games. So those guys take it personal, you know, for those games, and that's why you always get good games in the NFC East. But the, the Dallas Cowboys are going to, you know, have a little setback. You know, it, it's kind of funny how uh, Dallas, you know, two of their losses came to the Giants in the division. You know, um, so we'll see about that. Um, on defense, they lost a lot of guys, including Barry Church and Michael Claiborne. So Dallas is going to have, um, you know, they were already sort of poor in secondary last year. But now you're very poor in the secondary, and you're definitely going to have to count on that running game. That's why I don't really want to count on Dak Prescott as much this year. You know, I think he's capable of doing it, but you got to focus on the run game because your defense is going to give a lot of points this year. I can promise you that. But that being said, the offense has to score a lot of points, but I'd rather score points while milking that clock. Not scoring points on a two-minute drive when Dak Prescott's doing good. I'd rather give it to Darren McFadden or Ezekiel Elliott, you know, and have a 13-play drive for nine minutes, that kind of thing, and, and, and score a touchdown with that. So we'll see what goes on with that. Dallas has a bright future. Their offensive the line is just the best I've ever seen in my generation. And I'm pretty sure they're the offensive line for the Dallas Cowboys back in the 90s, they were pretty good, too. I just wasn't watching football in 94. This is beyond. I was six years old. But, uh... When I say this is the best O-line in the game, it cannot be stopped, cannot be touched. A lot of times, the play calling is what hurts the Dallas Cowboys. And I uh, hope they can get that fixed up a little bit. But, uh, so then they lose guys in the secondary. So you already know the Dallas Cowboys are going to focus strictly on defense. Their offense is fine. Strictly defense, pretty much. Uh, their first overall pick, uh, number 28, to get a uh, Taco Charlton. The defense and from Michigan. I think they sort of reached... Very, very hard for Taco because I think there's a lot of better players than him. Uh, they could have got someone and his talent second or third round, but um, I thought they could have used a playmaker and receiver, maybe something like that. I'm not sure, but they wound up going with Taco Charlton. I thought there was better DNs out there uh, to get him. He's, he's still physical. He has a nice little motor, uh, but besides that, I, I think he's just not ready to be a full-time starter, but... It just lets you know that their, their need for defensive end was very high, very high. So they went ahead and got Taco, and we'll see what he can do for the Dallas Cowboys. Their second uh, pick was uh, Chidobe uh, Awuzabe. Uh, I'm hoping I said his name right. Awuzabe. Uh, he's a cornerback from, uh, from Colorado. And this guy right here, he didn't get a lot of interceptions. It wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, highlights of interceptions, but he had a lot of pass breakups and a lot of uh, tackles for loss. So he's a big physical cornerback who likes to get up in, in there and, and do his thing. So, um, But he has a lot of pass deflections. He likes to get up in wide receivers, and you like that from the Dallas Cowboys' perspective. They need something of that physical caliber. I mean, you, you lost four secondary guys pretty much. Um, now you're trying to gain it back in the draft. So in the third pick, they go ahead and get uh, Jordan Lewis, cornerback from Michigan, and they really, uh, really like him. They basically got two guys who had uh, second-round grades. So you get Jordan Lewis who uh, got him in the third round, he was a second round grade. And then, of course, you get a uh, Chidobe, uh, who's a second round grade and got him in the second round. So you got what you wanted. You got the secondary guys back, man. So I think the Cowboys are going to try and uh, just wing it out this year. They have to focus again on the running game because like I said, we all know Aaron Rodgers did to that defense last year. Uh, they got gassed out pretty much towards the end. 
now you now you have a bunch of rookies trying to uh, uh, trying to put into the system to take away a Barry Church and to take away a Michael Claiborne, who, who guys that weren't spectacular by any means, but they were veterans who knew the system. Now you put rookies in there. Good luck with that, Dallas. Now I do say Dallas still has a good year, but I think the Giants are the division winners this year. I got them going 12 and 4, like I said earlier, on the Giants, uh, 32 to 32. Now the Dallas Cowboys went 13 to 3 last year. I have them at 11 and 5 this year. One game away from making it to the uh, to the uh, division, uh, winning the division, one game, and I think that they do make it to the wild card. Like I said, as long as you're in the playoffs, everything is fine. So Dallas, yeah, if Dallas gets in the playoffs, they're, they're a threat to anybody, anywhere, period. It's just how it is. They're a super duper threat. So I do like uh, Dallas going to the playoffs and making probably making some noise, but I don't know how much noise we'll find out. We shall find out. So. Like I said, next episode, be ready. We'll talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Green Bay Packers uh, for our 32 for 32. It is almost over with. Like I said, the start of the season is Thursday, September 7th. Our last two shows will be uh, the 5th. We'll talk about the Atlanta Falcons. And the 6th, we'll talk about the New England Patriots. That being said, stay tuned for the show tonight. I have a regular show. We'll talk about regular sports. College football just came back. Uh, a great weekend of college football. So we'll talk about... Ohio State and Florida State versus Alabama, Michigan versus Florida. We'll have all those uh, uh, in detail when we come back to our next episode. But uh, like, comment, subscribe. Check me out on Facebook. My name is Carlos Clayton. I'm from Lake Charles, Louisiana. If that helps, check me out on Twitter at Carlos Clayton underscore. I repeat at Carlos Clayton underscore. Uh, this is Uneducated Network. It's presenting Uneducated Sports Talk. I'm the host, Carlos Clayton. And as always, sports fans, you know what it is. Stay smart. Stay educated. Peace.